Hey, this is Paula from Trivium, and you're watching Montreality. The story, uh, we were a band that formed in 1999. Uh, that was prior to me joining. I joined in 2004. Been touring the world for the last seven years. We have five albums out, and our newest album is called In Waves. It came out last August. And that's pretty much the big picture of uh, the story. Uh, definitely had a lot of crazy things happen over the last seven years. Lots of tours, played with a lot of great bands, with In Flames right now, one of our, probably our best, some of our best friends in, in another band, and it's a good tour right now. I was always a good student. Uh, in middle school, I was sort of the rebellious student. I didn't really do bad stuff like like do drugs or smoke in the, the bathroom or anything. It was just I was really outspoken and I always would call teachers out when I thought they were wrong. And I learned that that's not the way you can go through life. You gotta, I mean, there's times to call people out and stuff, but sometimes you gotta learn that you can't do that. In high school, I didn't do that. I was a good student and uh, got good grades. So my parents were happy. I, I also learned that by doing good in school, it allowed me to do other things outside of school, like play music. My parents were more supportive because I did good in school, and that's definitely a lesson I can uh, tell kids they should learn, is that if you do good in school, your parents usually will buy you shit. <laughs> the job I had the longest was working at a hamburger place called Jack's Hamburgers. It was like a minute from where, not even a minute, it was like a 30 second walk from where I lived. Worked there for about a year and a half, and sports and school were just too much on my plate you know I couldn't really handle working there anymore and I didn't really make any good money so I quit and had a couple other jobs here and there worked for my dad a little bit you know after school to get some extra cash but for the most for the most part it was just always studying and playing sports and playing music most of the stuff that I've thought I mean is pretty practical I haven't really like splurged too hard but I guess I'm trying to think. Honestly, probably just buying my my last laptop was probably the biggest thing I could think of off the top of my head, or anything for for music. You know, maybe some new headphones, stuff like that. I figure if I'm gonna spend a good amount of money, I wanna get something that relates to what we do and makes more sense to get a nice laptop. You know, to do better demos and. That's how I usually tend to justify spending any large amount of money. Other than that, I don't really like to just spend on random things like, I don't know, a new set of skis when I live in Florida or something like that. <laughs> I think the key to success outside of just having good luck and being at the right place at the right time is working really hard and just being able to work through tough times. That's, that's the biggest thing. I mean, anyone... When times are good, it's easy to work hard, you're really stoked, but when things get bad or just overall things are negative, that's when you really know if you're willing to work hard for that success or for whatever that goal is you have in front of you. Ooh, what would I call the book? <laughs> I don't know, I guess maybe uh, since I'm a bass player, f Finger Magic, that would be my book. The Autobiography of Pablo Grigoletto. <laughs> Oh, let's see, prank. Pretty much every night is like a, a walking joke, prank, fest, you know, like everyone's got a really good sense of humor. Probably the, it, this is kind of, maybe it's kind of nasty, but it was really funny, is uh, some random, some random girls somehow ended up on the bus in Edmonton, and they were really drunk, out of hand, and you're not supposed to put anything in the toilet like paper and stuff. You know, people do it here and there, but uh, Corey discovered when he went into the bathroom to take a piss that not only was there a mound of toilet paper, but there was a uh, bloody feminine product at the bottom of it. So that was his surprise for the night. And he said he threw up a couple times. And the next morning when he woke up, he thought about it, what happened the night before, and he threw up in his mouth again. So that was pretty funny, but disgusting. <laughs> the top of my head, it's hard to say. If I could just like work, and do like maybe a, a, a song with like some of the bands that grew up really being into like you know maybe some dudes from Metallica or Iron Maiden just like a random one-off song not like an album if I could just do like an EP of something like that and just write some 
it doesn't even have to necessarily be like metal music just something different that'd be kind of cool i mean that's the only thing i could think of off the top of my head but uh really just getting to play with any other musicians would be fun even just jamming definitely a good mix of stuff uh i now with Spotify, I mean, God, I can listen to anything. I've uh, been listening to some Motown stuff, which is great. Really, really good stuff. Always been into electronic music. I mean, it's definitely blown up in the last couple months, but uh, just some random stuff here and there. Uh, but yeah, I guess Motown's kind of, I don't know why I've been in the mood to listen to it, but that stuff is so good. Such, such well-written and well-played music. Favorite airport? Oh, let's see. Definitely, there's not many in the states that I like. Uh, I would have to say, off the top of my head, the, some of the best ones we've been to, Hong Kong, and the one in Singapore, I can't remember the name, it's like Ch Changi or something like that. It's like literally like a mall. It's incredible. It's definitely the place you want to have an eight hour layover. Our fans, by far, the biggest motivator. <clears throat> I mean, they're, they're so loyal, they come out early. No matter where we are, there's always a kid in a Trivium shirt waiting at like 12 or even earlier some days. And um, that's definitely why we do it. I mean, without our fans, we wouldn't be traveling in such a nice bus. We wouldn't be flying around the world to play shows for them. So that's the biggest motivator and the thing that always reminds me that we have to be on our A game. And you can't let little things like showing up late like we did today. You know, it, it's kind of annoying, but you just got to think... You know, these kids don't know that. They're only going to see us once, you know, tonight. And we have to be the best we can be. And you got to, like, put all that negative stuff or anything that might have bothered you from the day, just put it out and just have a good time when you're playing. First paid show? I mean, I guess technically we've been paid since I was in the band, but it was like, you know, $200 a night back in the days when we were in the van. It was, like, barely enough to cover gas. I don't even think that would cover gas money anymore at this point with the way things are. Once we started touring nationally, that was, you know, you're making money right away. It's just not necessarily profit, but, you know, when you start off at the, at the bottom level, like in the van, you know, you're just trying to, you're just trying to keep gas in the van and hopefully get some food and you're living off the rider, which is uh, one thing I, I learned and I can tell anyone that's in a band that's starting to tour, get some substantial things on there, not just booze and not just candy. That was a mistake. 